remember one day I was at Grandpa's farm and I asked him about sex. He sort of smiled and said, Maybe instead of telling you what sex is, why don't we go out to the horse pasture and I'll show you. So we did. And there on the ground were my parents having sex. <laughs> Jack Candy Deep Thoughts, you son of a bee. Every time. So, anyways, I know what you guys are thinking. Bucky, that's great and all. But shouldn't you be teaching us about, like, else if or something? Well, yes and no. You see, now on with the tutorial. In the last tutorial, I taught you guys about else if. And it's a really neat syntax. Very, very handy. So handy, in fact, and so commonly used, that even though it's incredibly simple, Objective-C made an even simpler way to test multiple values and conditions and stuff like that. So, quite often, you have a variable, and you want to test what it's equal to. So, for example, you have H. You want to test if it's equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so on and so on. Well, you want to do something different for each age that it's equal to. So you can do if, else if, else if, else if, else, or you can do something called a switch. Now what a switch does is it doesn't whip you like uh, you know some people think, or it doesn't turn on the lights on enough, no not that kind of switch either. What it does is it takes a variable, which is also called like a condition I think, or an expression, sorry, it's a variable and it tests it against several different values and depending on the value it has a certain statement it executes so you know enough of me talking you know let's just go ahead and get building this program I was just talking about so put in age equals like three or something actually let's put two I like two a lot better than three so we can if we want to test what age is equal to even though we already know what it's equal to say we didn't know what it was equal to we want to make a program to do something different for the numbers like one to four and then if it's not either of those uh... do something else so let's go ahead and in order to test one variable what we do is do this we would put switch and now you can see the outline for it right now now for expression you write what variable do you want to test in the different cases are the different things it can be equal to. The constant would be the thing that didn't change, like one, two, three, or four. And the default would be the thing that if you enter like 99, if all your cases didn't get matched, then what do you want your program to do by default? So if it like tests one, two, and three, and you enter 99, it's like, what the F do I do now? You gotta give it something to do. And break, what do these breaks mean? Well, after you test it and it comes across a positive result that actually matches you don't want it to keep testing all the other results because you already found your answer so that's where break comes in what break means is alright I'm gonna break out of this program I already found my answer if you didn't and say you entered an age for one you don't need to test three four or five if you didn't have that break it would test three four or five six seven eight nine ten so why do you put a break in I mean what's the harm well it takes a lot of your memory and more time to execute. If if you just find your answer and exit the switch, it saves a lot of time and memory. That's all I'm going to say. So let's go ahead and get building this program. Now that I gave you guys a background, you can actually see a program in use. So switch, let's go ahead and test age. Now let's go ahead in your brackets because we're going to be executing more than one code. Let's see, in case age is equal to 1, and go ahead and put semicolon and again one is your constant what do you want to do ns log um let's go ahead and put something stupid one what if age is equal to one they are cute this is like a baby test or something one hmm, it's pretty cute and now we want to break if we came across one and age was equal to one no need to test two three four and five and six we already find our answer let's break out of the switch so it would execute their cute and break so let's go ahead and do this a uh, couple times. Let's see, copy two, three, four. That would be good. So let's go ahead and test if age is equal to one, two, three, and four. So in the case of two, if age is equal to two, we write 
they are terrible, terrible twos. In the case of three, right, they are thirsty or something. Thirsty threes, I don't know what to call them. And they are four, I don't know, just right, they are four. You get nothing special if you're four, kid. So now what this program is going to do is we already gave it a condition to test. It tests age. And by that we mean switch age. And what switch means is, all right, going to give you a block of code in a bunch of cases. Whatever age is equal to, do that bit of code. So if it's equal to 1, do this bit of code. If it's equal to 3, do this bit of code. If it's equal to 4, do this bit of code. But now your computer program is like, all right, I'm going to test this, but if it's not equal to 1, 2, 3, or 4, you got to give me something to do. Well, that's what we're going to do right now. Whenever it tests all of its cases and it still hasn't found its answer, we need to give it a default program to run right there and in order to do that just go ahead and write default and let's give it something to run default in a slog but like that isn't a kid it's a effing teenager uh, you know gotta make it kinda dramatic and then break out of that so let's go ahead and run this and maybe we'll see what's going on so build and run save all in the age of two, they are terrible like that. Now let's go ahead and change it. So what happened? Well, let me change this one more time. Change this to three, build and run, save. Now age is equal to three, and it says they are thirsty, and I forgot the T. So what happens is you have a variable named age, and it's equal to three. Switch age means test the age variable. So it tests it, and it says in the case of one, if age is 1, do this. Well, it wasn't. It said they are thirsty, not they are cute. In the case of 2, do this. Was it 2? No. In the case of 3, do this. They are thirsty. So that's why your program executed the code, they are thirsty. Because it tested this, tested this, and tested this. And it says, all right, it is actually 3. So that's why I'm going to execute this bit of code. And then, once I'm done, I'm going to break out of it. No need to even test this or this. I already found my answer. It's time to take a break, run on my next bit of computer programming code. And again, uh, let me just show you guys. If it's not 1, 2, 3, 4, put like 99, it's going to run the default. And it's going to say, that isn't a kid. It's an effing teenager. Ha ah! ha So, you know, that's what the default is for. If all your cases are wrong, it has to run something by default. So that's the basics of a switch and what it does. And again, the else if is useful when you're testing like a condition less than greater than. And a switch is really useful when you're testing if a variable is exactly equal to like one, exactly equal to three, not like between the range of three and eight. So that's your basics of a switch, like I said. I hope you enjoyed my program. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to check my blog. And uh, that's it. Enough of me talking. I'll see you next tutorial.